It's all yours. All right. I appreciate it again. You guys having me here this time. Right. Have you won? It's been fun. Somebody that's been here the last couple nights. Uh, what, was it, what was the first time? What was our first? What were we talking about? Somebody came back. I'm going to hear that again, right? <laughs> Verse 9, we're talking about from James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Remember, we've talked about parts of uh, martial arts and things that we teach have to do with somebody maybe attacking us. We learn how to get away and defend ourselves and get help. And then, remember, who was here last night? Anybody here last night? Who remembers last night? What are we talking about last night? How to stand. Very good, Drew. Ephesians 6 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality and against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'll stop there. We talked about standing. Everything we do in martial arts has to do with what we call our stance. In other words, in this is how we stand and, and where, our, where our feet are and, and, and how our body works and everything work together. Tonight, I want to look at a little bit different area of, we're going to do a little few different things tonight, but, but I want to talk about somewhat what we call where our power comes from. Not only we learn how to stand, we learn how to do some things fast. We did the first night, and we're going to see a little bit more tonight, kind of a review, if you will. But we're going to look at, uh, did anyone ever stop to think about, now let, listen to what I'm saying. Ever take time and stop and think about the power that God has? Okay. Wait, who can tell me, how, how did God create the world? Somebody tell me, how did, we, how did God create the world? He just spoke, didn't he? He said, let there be light and there was light. All God had to do was speak. That's a pretty powerful God. And when we look at the, the power, we're not... Uh, Aaron, to God, I want to show you something. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 48, verse 13... God said, my hand also laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand expand the heaven. When I call unto them, they stand up together. What God's saying is in the Bible, a span is the way they used to measure. From my, from my thumb to my little finger is a span. God said, my right hand has spanned the heavens. That's a pretty big God, isn't it? God can look up and his hand covers the heavens. And he said, when I, when I speak to them, they stand up. God can control the universe just by speaking. Now, we're going to come back in a few minutes and apply that and hopefully help you with that with the Bible. But tonight, as far as our, our, our martial arts and cry, we're going to show you a few different things tonight. Being the last night, we're going to have a little fun. Some of our famous power. Uh, John, in a moment, is going to, is going to uh, break. Uh, we've got six, uh, six bricks here. John's going to break. And I'm going to do a bigger stack, some big bricks. i got some bricks about twice that size. We're going to break a bunch of them in a little while. We're going to show you some other things in the process, too. And uh, have a little bit of fun tonight. And then hopefully learn something about God. Yeah, if you let us. Sir? Thank you. 
baseball movement is not always real, but when we look at karate, or if you ever seen something do it, or what we call martial arts, there's a lot of ways you can do things. They learn how to protect their shelf, they learn how to do things with a lot of power. And uh, we'll look a little bit of that tonight, there's moving a few things out of the way. But uh, next, next we're going to show you kind of in a fun way. We're going to show you some of our first time we did some what we call self-defense. What if somebody attacks you? What if someone's trying to hurt you? And uh, we're just going to have a little bit of fun with uh, showing you, um, just showing you a little bit of that. somebody and uh, we're going to do some more skills of fun stuff in a little bit um, but I'll show you this we just looked at the hand of God how big God's hand is I said his hand is span the heavens and God's good that's a pretty big hand isn't it if you wanted someone to help you with something sometimes you want someone bigger than you right you need strength you need help with something you, need, you want somebody how about God or the hand that can span the heavens and you look, here's somebody that God did help. In Genesis, remember the story of Joseph? Remember Joseph? He was, his brothers wanted to kill him. And said they decided to just kind of put him in a pit. And as they put him in a pit, the way that they sold him as a slave, he went to Egypt. Went, but uh, somewhere along the way, God used him to save a nation. He became the number one two in charge of it the country of Egypt, and put food away, and planned for a famine, and he saved the country. Brought his family and saved them. At the end of Joseph's life, as it said about him, it says, Joseph is a simple bow, even a simple bow by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archer that sorely grieved him, shot at him, but hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. 
When Joseph was in trouble, it said it was the hand of God that made him strong. And we're going to get more into that. I'll, I'll demonstrate that a little better in a, little, in a while. We'll come back to that thought. But just think about think about the hand of God. Man, if I'm struggling my life, where, where better to go to get help when I need something in my life than the hand of God that created the universe? Get help. You show you a little bit more power tonight just for the fun of it. You bring it a little bit bigger. If I remember correctly, I think they weigh a little over 20 pounds apiece. But a little thicker.
He gave us He gave us the Word. He gave us the Bible. And then He gave us the Bible to read for ourselves. And then He gave us a church and a pastor so they can help us. And that's kind of like what it was for martial arts. You know, it took me over five years to get to my black belt. We think that's the highest rank as far as the belt we wear, but re really, when I got this black belt, I would just kind of get started. Now I learned all the simple stuff. I learned all the all the all the all the ways to do things, and and now I can start putting it together and getting good at it. I've still not learned everything. There's still a lot out there to learn. And that's just like it is for living for God. Is if you're saved and on your way to heaven, that's the first step. Getting God's family. But then you need to come to church and be faithful and, and learn how to grow. So I preached a sermon one time talking about being a black belt Christian. And you can get there, but you have to keep training. You have to keep coming. So I need to be closer. I'm going to need the brick to cover the whole bunch of the glass. So, another aspect of martial arts that they're setting up right now is, along with the power, is martial arts is based on very precise techniques. I'm not going to get into a brawling match and see who wins by beating each other up and who gets fired first. Martial arts is designed to be very specific and very precise. Just for fun, next one I'm going to do here is I'm going to break. I'm going to break this blur. Of course, you see it setting up here. I laid it across a couple glasses, just for the fun of it. Maybe we're not always sure what to do. Maybe we're not always sure what it is. You know, just like I read in, 
that passage, we're going to look to God first. God's the one that wants to help us. He sent His Son to die for us. That's how much He loved us. But sometimes things are tough. We just read that passage about Joseph. Man, how about a hard life? Man, being sold by your own family into slavery. Man, being put in prison for something he didn't do. All these things Joseph went through. Everything that Joseph did and all that, he trusted God. And when he did, it was the hand of God that lifted him up and gave him that strength so he could do what was right. We're going to demonstrate that here in just a moment. Demonstrate that in a moment. I'm going to attempt to break these, these bricks with a newspaper. <laughs> Somebody can look at that if you want. I can bring that to a moment. Sure not, there's nothing in it. Nothing strange about that paper, right? Just a newspaper. Uh, but here's the thing. This paper by itself isn't that really a match for the... I think it's all right. You good? You know, this paper... Isn't going to do much against this concrete, is it? I mean, so does paper, right? But if we allow God to keep control of our life, if we allow God to say, God, whatever you want to do, then maybe I can't make it. I can't, I can't get through that. There's nothing I can do by myself. But you know, if we allow ourselves to go to be used by God's hand and let God's hand have control of our life, God can do amazing things with us. And sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it says, you know, we want to do something great and let God use us. But sometimes God says, in order to do that, in order to do that, I've got to make some adjustments in your life. Maybe there's something in your life that God says, you know what? I want to use you, but if, if I'm going to use you, there might be some music or something you have to get rid of. See, my problem right now is I'm going to break them bricks of that paper, but right now this paper's too thick. I can't use it the way it is. And God says, I want to use you. You said you want to be used, but sometimes maybe there's some friends in your life or some, somebody you shouldn't hang around that, you know, you need to get rid of that in your life. And God said, there's some things in your life that you know are wrong and, and sin and your pastor has preached on and, and showed you from the Bible and you need to get rid of these things in your life before I can use you the way I want. And then God says, now you got some of that stuff out, now let's get the good stuff back in. And God says, I need to mold you. I need to make you the exact way I want you to be. And we keep coming to church and keep learning and keep reading our Bible and as we allow God to mold our life and put God, let God put our life the way He wants our life to be and let God have complete control of where we're at in life, then He can do amazing things with us.
there might be somebody here tonight that says, yeah, I'd like to live right. I'd like to have a good life. I'd like to have God be able to help me, but maybe you're not even sure if you're in God's family. Maybe you're not sure if you're here today. Maybe, maybe you've been coming to church. Maybe you're young. Maybe you're older. Maybe you've been here at church for a while. Maybe, maybe you've been around a while and, and thinking about you say, if something happened and I die today, I don't know 100% sure that I go to heaven. You know, God said He wants to help you, but God, God's going to help His children. God's going to help the people that are in His family. And God said there's a, there's a place that He created um, for, for Satan and His angels. He didn't want humans to go there. He didn't want people to go. And there's a place called hell, but the Bible says, without Jesus, that is where you go. That's right. God said there's also a place that He lives and has His family and Jesus is there in heaven and, and where there's a stream of gold and, and the Bible says there's mansions. And could you imagine, ladies, talking about some of you might like your jewelry and, and dress up. I know my girls do. And, and could you imagine the gate in the city? The Bible says that heaven's 1,500 miles high. It says the gate, the front gate, is one giant pearl. Now think about that. If you could go there and be with Jesus... Be with the one that died for me. And, and see God for the only time he'd be able to stand there and be able to see God face to face. Or God says, you can try to do things your own way and keep doing it all on your own. And live your own life. And go without Christ. You can keep doing it all, all by yourself and say, I'm going to work to heaven. I'm just going to be good. I'm going to keep doing what I want to do. And God said that place without Christ, there's a place called hell. That the Bible says not a fun. It says it's dark. You can't even see. Have you ever been in a place that's so dark you can't even see your hand in front of your face? That's kind of, it, it's a weird feeling being able to almost feel darkness. But on top of that, the Bible says it's a place, a place of fire. That it says it will never be quenched. It'll never go out. And all about I mean, horrible, horrible things, and the list goes on. And, and think about the screaming of the kind of people that'll be there, the people that knew better. I think some of the loudest screams in hell will probably be the one I can't prove this a Bible, but probably be the people that sat in a place like this and heard the Word of God and said, I could have accepted Christ, but I didn't. Sure. I can't imagine being in a place like that. But God said there's a way out. And that's why we have meetings like this, to give you that opportunity. To give you a place that you can come and hear the Word of God and say, God gave you a way out. Jesus died for you so that you can go to heaven. Jesus loved you so much. Could you imagine having to have a penalty? What if you were sentenced to prison for, for life or sentenced to a death penalty and somebody else stepped in and said, that's okay, you can go free and I'll die in your place. I don't know if that, how that happened to too much in our country. But that's exactly what Jesus did for your eternity. Hell is real. The Bible even gives an account in Luke of a man that was there and was able to tell us from hell. He said, go get somebody to tell my family so they don't come here. But that place is real. But God said, hey, I'd rather you were with me. God wants you in heaven. Jesus died so that you can go to heaven and not have, and he did it for free. He said, it's a gift. All you have to do is accept it. I just want you to think about that thought. As we end in a few minutes, I'm going to finish with something here. I'll speak for a moment. But I want you to think about where is your eternity? Where are you headed? I don't care how young and how old you are. We don't know what the future is. What if you die tonight? Where would you be?
think we need any center lights in this building. Something like this is okay, but it might be some of the issues we should have more I think sometimes the problem is we just don't think about our eternity enough because we're too concerned about what's going on around us in this world. But hell is real, and God would rather have us in heaven. But also, Christian, what if you're here tonight and you say, you know, I know I'm saved, I know I'm on my way to heaven. And when was the last time you told somebody else to help keep them out of heaven? You know, there's only one escape. There's only one way through this, and that's through Jesus Christ. But I just wonder, if something did happen to you tonight, where would you be?